Hi, Harry Dent here coming to you on Friday the 13th. <laughs> Will it be an unlucky day? Well, I'm actually recording this Thursday night the 12th uh, because of travel tomorrow. So the markets are uh, in a critical position. Uh, we have seen, uh, you have to remember, with all this stimulus since 2009, and, and, and especially in COVID, they just took the lid off and, and you know, 10 trillion combined fiscal and, and monetary in just a couple of years. I mean, this is just so unprecedented. You know, the market just kept making new highs, even in a time of demographic and fundamental economic weakness, which I have very good indicators to measure. So, so we've got this final bubble and, and it finally burst. And, 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 and I studied bubble burst uh, knowing we were in one of the biggest bubbles in history. And, and the difference is this one was totally artificial. Past bubbles like the Roaring Twenties bubble or the, the one in uh, the late 90s, these were natural bubbles where the economy is so strong, and especially the tech stocks doing so well and, and interest rates and inflation falling. It's just an ideal circumstance. That's when investors will go overboard and overvalue things. And that's, that's what we had, you know, late 94 to early 2000. And now we've had a longer, the longest such surge because of the stimulus from early 2009 into late 2021. So the NASDAQ peaked in March, uh, November 22nd and the S&P actually on January 4th of, of 2022. So we finally got the first crash that was big enough to tell me very high chance this bubbles over, okay? And also the fact that the Federal Reserve and central banks around the world, but in this case, particularly the Federal Reserve, was forced by their overreaction to COVID. Look, it's a natural virus that hits. Oh, why should you do massive stimulus to keep economy from slowing from a natural virus? It, nobody's gonna blame the government for that. Nobody's gonna say there's something wrong with the economy, but they did it anyway, because they've been stimulating forever. They know how weak the economy is. Otherwise, they would not have had to stimulate. Uh, increasingly and escalating since since uh, early 2009. So 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 here we are. That this great bubble. I was looking for a historic that bubbles when they burst. The extremes are first crash is at least 28 percent historically and as much as 50 percent. So when we got that 34 percent first crash in the Nasdaq, I said, okay, we're we're finally done here. This bubble has peaked. And we've been, and, and we actually went, went bounced up, and we made a slight new low in the Nasdaq. And some markets only retested those. So, so you could count this first crash as bottoming in June or in October. But either way, we've been moving sideways ever since. That is the two-way bounce. So remember, in a major market move, whether bullish or bearish, the Elliott wave sequence is, in this case, down. First wave down, two wave bounce against it, third wave, and the third wave is usually the most powerful, down, and then a fourth wave bounce against it, and then a fifth wave to, to finalize. So, so we're in that one, two wave, and I have considered, continually believe that, that since mid-August, we have started that third wave, that middle and most powerful wave typically, uh, and we've just seen the first wave of that. So, you know, you have waves within waves, okay? Uh, I don't want to get too complicated here. So, we're, we really are. The, the critical thing to be watching, I'm, I'm using the NASDAQ as the lead here. It's, it, it's a little more tech oriented, a little more sexy, a little more dynamic than the S&P 500. They're both similar. Um, but I'm looking at 10,088 on the NASDAQ. That's what I'm looking for. That was the low. The last low in October, if we make a new low below that, then it confirms we are in this powerful third wave and the market should start going down faster, harder. And then that's when, before you know it, we're going to be down you know, a few months after that down 50, 60 percent. That is when investors are going to realize, oh, my God, this is not a correction. Uh, this is this is a crash. Oh, my God, this is not going to be a recession. <laughs> it could be a depression. That's going to change the psychology of investors because, because again, since early 2009, they took us out of a recession, a, a really a depression that should have gone from late 2007 top, the top that actually was, it should have taken into 2010 to bottom out that and stock should have been down 80 plus percent instead of 57 percent. So they cut that crash in half. They stimulated the way out of it. And they, you know, the Federal Reserve, they were thinking, oh, just a year of stimulus and we'll get back to normal. No. 
My indicators show we're in a period like the 1930s, 2008 through 2022, 23 is like 1929 into 42, okay? A major downturn and a deflationary downturn, not an inflationary recession, a long recession like we'd had from 68 to 82. So that's where we're at. Where we're at this point, we've had that first crash. I do not see a new high in the markets, okay? Now we're in this bounce and, and it is, boy, it's just reticent. It knows it's gonna give a big signal. As soon as it breaks 10,088, and that's just so many, you know, three, four, five percent below here where we've been recently, okay? When it breaks that, we should accelerate down, and then you know this is happening. Now, now you've been forewarned about this. I gave my strongest all-out sell signal for stocks twice in December, okay? Just before the January 4th peak in the S&P 500. So, so, but if you still got stuff and you're still wondering, yeah, maybe or not, uh, boy, that, that break is your last chance. And I say this bounce, uh, and, and, and we could see this bounce go on, you know, another so many days or, or weeks even if it, if it wants to. This bounce is the last chance to sell into uh, because the next wave is going to be very likely strong. Now, here's the only counter thing. I mean, I always have to consider all possibilities now that we've had an economy so manipulated by central banks for the first time in history. They did not do this in the Great Depression, okay? It was minor stimulus compared to this, okay? So, so, you know, anything could happen here. If we get through this year, 2023, and we don't see markets get much worse than they have been recently and stuff, then you know what? The central banks have pulled off a historic coup. They have avoided what I would call a Great Depression. Now, I would still tell you that I would feel very strongly that by doing that, as Japan has done since the 90s, they've compromised, they will compromise the recovery for, for years and decades to come because you have to understand, and this is what economists don't get, they see recessions as the enemy. Recessions are part of the process. Booms expand new things and, 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 and growth and all that, but recessions wring out all the excesses and, 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 and bad debts and zombie companies and stuff. We have record zombie companies, record debt levels at all levels, government, private, business, consumers, everything. Purifying this stuff out of the economy makes it stronger. What doesn't kill you makes it stronger. This is what the central banks do not understand. And this is, I, I think this is very ill-fated policy. So. If we do get through 2023 and we don't have a crash much worse than we've already seen, okay? Again, 34, they got to 38% on the NASDAQ, okay? I think it was 27% on the S&P. Then I think we're just in for a mediocre recovery for years to come. The next boom, not naturally, from demographics, is late, say, late 2024 into late 2037, okay? And then there'll be another boom down the road that'll peak more with the really strong rise of India by then in 2065. Those are going to be the two topping periods in the future, late 2037 and 2065, give or take. That's something for your children to worry about. So, but this, this, this is going to prove something very soon. Have the central banks actually cushioned a depression? and made it not as bad as it would naturally be. Again, and that may be the long-term detriment of the economy, which I think it will be, but have they at least accomplished that? Or do we have a final crash here that brings us back down to the levels we should have gone down in 2009 to 2010 you know, or so in the first crash, like 29 to 32? And I think that's what's going to happen. So again, <laughs> last chance to sell uh, stocks and risk assets of all type and especially real estate. And, and I will definitely keep you updated in this critical time.